really immense pleasure for me to introduce Professor Deependra Prasad. Of course, uh, uh, Deependra Prasad doesn't need any introduction to not only in India, anywhere, I would say, but it, it, it's, it's really to uh, say a few words about his contribution. So currently he is a professor at uh, IIT Mumbai and previously he was a professor of math in mathematics department of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. His main area, of course, whole number theory, I would say, and especially in automorphic representations. Some people might know this uh, Gan Gross Prasad conjecture, which is still there. And uh, he's famous for that. And of course, he's a Bhatnagar awardee and uh, JC Host Fellowship. He won, he won the Swarna Jayanti Fellowship. And of course, in the last uh, ICM, he was an uh, invited speaker. And he is of uh, great help to uh, uh, you know, it's, it's really a real pleasure to have uh, Deependra in Michelle's 75th birthday because these are the two persons that I've seen over the years that any student or anywhere you seek any kind of help, Deependra is always there. At, uh, during his many trips at Harishchandra Research Institutes, even the young, the first year students, he will be sitting with them and discussing with them any kind of mathematics. So it's real pleasure, Deependra. So I welcome uh, Professor Dipendra Prashad to present his talk. And it's a very interesting topic, arithmetic in L functions, L values, Dipendra Prashad. All right, uh, thank you very much, Kalyan. Uh, uh, I know you are a great friend of mine, so you only say good things about me. Uh, nice, and uh, I am uh, honored to be speaking in this conference in honor of uh, Michelle Waldschmidt whom I consider as one of the really uh, great friends of uh, uh, all of us in India. I think uh, he has been uh, a support to many of us in at various points and uh, for any anything uh, we look up to him. So it's uh, really an honor to speak uh, uh, on his 70th uh, today. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, I, I may have said in the abstract of the talk, uh, there is a lot of arithmetic hid hidden in L values. And, uh, 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 you know, if you look at the value of the Riemann zeta function at negative integers, uh, uh, at uh, odd negative integers, these are supposed to be rational numbers and uh, the numerator and denominator of those rational numbers have a lot of meaning associated to them. Uh, my talk here will be on uh, one specific aspect of the L value, uh, which is either L values at one or L values at zero, which are uh, more closely related to class numbers. So this is a conference on class numbers and uh, you know, for last few years, I have been uh, pursuing a certain uh, viewpoint about these matters, which perhaps are not new, but uh, which are not so easy for me to know whether the, there is some newness or not. So this lecture is about uh, certain Artin representations of the Galois group with uh, complex coefficients for which we know a priori that the L value at zero is a non-zero algebraic number. Uh, so such Artin uh, L, L representations are well understood. So I might say that uh, Artin representations are a common generalization of uh, uh, Dirichlet L functions and the, the Riemann zeta function or more generally Dedekind zeta functions. So in number theory, uh, of course, we all uh, study Riemann zeta function uh, and uh, its uh, zeta values. And then there are these Dedekind zeta functions. And then uh, there is the Dirichlet L functions, which play a prominent role in uh, many investigations. And Artin uh, representations or Artin L functions are a common generalization of all these concepts. So we will, uh, so uh, this uh, L value at zero 
often is zero. Uh, but there are few cases in which it is non-zero uh, and it is an algebraic number and uh, 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 it's an uh, important question to understand the nature of this algebraic number L0 rho. Uh, so uh, by the nature of the algebraic number, I mean that what are the primes which divide the numerator and the denominator of the L value. So the L value <clears throat> may take values in a certain number field. It's an algebraic number. So in that number field, uh, one would like to understand what are the primes which divide the numerator and the denominator. Uh, so this lecture is more about the denominator. So we think of the possible denominators in the L value as existence of poles of L0 rho. So, you know, when you go modulo that prime, the L value becomes infinite. So it is like a pole for, for the L value at the corresponding prime ideal of G bar. So this is the algebraic closure of the integers. It is thus analogous to the conjecture of Artin, both in its aim and as we will see in its formulation. Uh, recall that the conjecture of Artin asserts that the L function has an analytic continuation to an entire function on the complex plane, unless rho is the trivial representation, in which case it has a unique pole at s equals one. So this is the famous uh, Artin's conjecture. Uh, and uh, analogous to this, we want to understand when the L value L0 rho uh, has denominators. Okay, uh, for an Artin representation, one knows that L0 rho is non-zero if and only if F is a totally real number field, such as Q, and rho cuts out a CM extension of F, such that the complex conjugation it goes to minus one in GL and C. So these are the representations for which L0 rho is non-zero, if and only if. In this situation, there is a famous theorem of Jigel and Klingen, which says that L0 rho is an algebraic number belonging to the field generated by the trace of rho. So the representation rho, <coughs> If it's a directly character from Z mod N star, then it takes some values in a cyclotomic field. Uh, in any case, it always takes values in a cyclotomic field and uh, L0 rho will be an algebraic number there. On the other hand, one expects that when the L uh, value is zero, then the first non-zero derivative of the L, value, L function at zero is always transcendental, a certain determinant of a logarithm of algebraic numbers. So this is uh, uh, very much the subject pursued by Michel Waldschmidt. Um, I believe he told me something about a regulator being uh, transcendental or not but I don't fully recall. I imagine it is always transcendental uh, when it's not one, uh, when it's a non-trivial determinant, uh, but maybe uh, 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 I, I can imagine that this is only a conjecture. Okay, so uh, one of the, uh, uh, Things uh, one of the first things that one learns that the uh, dedicant zeta function of a uh, number field which is Galois over Q can be expressed in terms of uh, the product of these uh, Artin L functions. So in some sense, uh, uh, these uh, the dedicant zeta functions may be may appear to be more well known, but uh, somehow uh, these Artin L functions uh, factorize these zeta functions into more primitive functions. 
So these Artin L functions uh, are more uh, more building blocks of all the L functions which appear uh, in uh, algebraic number theory. So the uh, Dedekin zeta function uh, is a product of Artin L function in a very specific way. Okay, so uh, one of the important considerations in this lecture and in much of number theory is the class number formula, uh, which I have expressed uh, at s equals zero in terms of uh, class number, regulator, and the roots of unity, and there is R1 plus R2 minus one. And uh, so this is the class number formula. In particular, you will see that uh, uh, this uh, exponent is, uh, so maybe I am getting a bit confused there. Uh, uh, this exponent is, uh, is, is, is zero only for uh, Q or for a, a quadratic imaginary field where the, uh, number of roots of uh, number of units is finite. Okay, so observe that considering the class number formula using the zeta value at s equals zero is much simpler than using the zeta value at s equals one. Although they have this, uh, they are the same using the functional equation of the zeta function. So since uh, uh, zeta functions and L functions have a functional equation relating S and one minus S. The information at zero and one is essentially the same, but uh, the functional equation uh, has to be carefully formulated. And uh, oh, what I am suggesting here is that uh, the value at zero tends to be much simpler. Uh, for example, for any quadratic extension k of q, the class number hk has the simple expression. Uh, the L value at zero is just the class number times regulator. Uh, where chi is the quadratic character of the Galois group, equal, equivalently a Dirichlet character associated to the quadratic field and R is the regulator of the quadratic field. Thus, if the quadratic field is imaginary, we have even the simpler formula L0 chi is H. So yeah, uh, there is such a simple formula. So one of the things that uh, we will be doing in this lecture is that if you have a CM field with F a totally real uh, subfield, so you know, CM field, is a quadratic extension of a totally real field, all whose embeddings are complex. So by definition, a CM field contains a totally real subfield over which it is quadratic and all its embeddings are complex. So the, if E is a CM with F totally real subfield, then R1 plus R2 is the same for E as for F and the regulator for E and F are the same except for a possible power of two. And then if you look at the class number formula and divide, uh, so you, you know, there was this class number formula, uh, H R upon omega S raised to power R1 plus R2 minus one. And uh, you do it for E and for F and then you divide. So what I'm saying is that uh, R1 plus R2 minus one are the same for both of them. And uh, therefore uh, uh, the quotient will uh, be non-zero at zero. And uh, the, the terms in uh, this class number formula H R upon omega, uh, the regulator is supposed to be the transcendental part and rather uh, difficult part to understand. But uh, uh, in the process of dividing, the regulators go away because the regulator is calculated in terms of determinant of the units. And uh, because R1 plus R2 is the same, the units are the same for E and for F. 
uh, with some small minor uh, differences. And uh, that means that the class number formula for zeta E upon zeta F simplifies to some very simple algebraic expression, uh, HE upon HF upon omega E upon omega F. So, uh, uh, in fact, this is the identity that we want to look at and to manipulate with. Okay, so in this identity, observe that the L functions are associated. So, you know, we are looking at this L0 row uh, raised to power dimension row is equal to this algebraic number, uh, this uh, uh, rational number. And uh, uh, there is this product over representations and uh, on the class group also the Galva group operates. So the, uh, uh, as you know, class group is a certain abelian group, uh, but on which, uh, you know, a class group of let's say Q zeta n also has a module structure over the Galva group, which is Z mod n star. And in general, if, uh, uh, e is Galva over Q, then uh, the right hand side, uh, these are Galva modules. So modulo some details, we basically assert that the two sides are not only the same as a product taken over certain representations of the Galva group, but the individual factors on the two sides are the same. So in some sense, uh, uh, this is basically what uh, uh, I am uh, trying to do that uh, this, for, uh, this formula in which uh, on the left hand side, there is the product of L values. And uh, uh, I, as I said, uh, these L values are non-zero algebraic numbers by a theorem of uh, Klingen and Jiegel. So they are these product of algebraic numbers and here, this is an integer. Uh, no, it's a rational number. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I think we already saw in the talk of Larry Washington that uh, uh, the class group of uh, totally re, uh, at least Q zeta n plus divides the class group of Q zeta n. And uh, there is the usual notation H, H plus and H minus. And uh, this is what is called H minus. And H minus is a, therefore not a rational number, but an integer. And this omega E upon omega F, so F is totally real. So the only roots of unity are plus minus one. And therefore, basically it's the roots of unity. So the denominator, so this is a rational number, which is uh, on top an integer and on bottom, it's uh, just the roots of unity. And uh, there are some roots of unity. Uh, uh, there are possibly some roots of unity and that's the denominator. Okay, so uh, in some sense, the essence of my lecture is to look at this identity, which is a product of certain number of terms indexed by representations on the left. And again, product of certain number of terms indexed by representations on the right. And we want to say that not only are the products the same, but individually they can be matched. So, uh, uh, so you know, for matching in particular, this demands that as the class group have integral order, so must the L functions. So as I said, the right hand side, which is uh, basically the class number, that's an integer. Whereas these L values are uh, algebraic numbers. And uh, uh, if we want to match them term by term, then in particular, uh, uh, mm, uh, the L values must be integral. And, uh, you know, I mean, a priori it may happen that one L value is uh, P by Q and the other L value is Q by P. And they are denominators, they, but they cancel each other out. But uh, one would like to say that there is a matching term by term. Okay, so thus we would like to separate out uh, as two conclusions, so the above point of view that the L values are integral except for certain obvious row. 
So, you know, there is a little bit of denominator in the right hand side, this uh, roots of unity, there is a little bit of denominator. So, the, one knows that there are some obvious uh, uh, art and representations which are going to give rise to denominator. And then the second conclusion is that the class group as a module for the Galois group uh, appears in it with non-zero multiplicity if and only if corresponding L value is non-zero mod P. So these are uh, two, uh, two conclusions I uh, would like to draw and to draw your attention to that uh, one expects the L values to be integral and the uh, relationship of uh, uh, class groups being zero or non-zero in a certain eigen component depending on a certain L value, mod P. Okay, so uh, this is exactly what happens for E equals Q zeta P by the famous theorem of Harbron and Ribet, which is one of the main <clears throat> motivating example for all that we do here. And this is what we will review next. But before that, we review. Uh, so, you know, the L functions, which uh, the art in L functions, which will come up for abelian extensions, such as the cyclotomic field Q, zeta, P, are directly L functions. And I just want to review that. Uh, okay. So, uh, here is a bit of a review of uh, directly L functions. Uh, Mohit, when did I start? Yeah, 10.50. Sorry, 11.50 you started. 11.50, which is, uh, you know... 11.40, sorry. 11.40. No, so you have till 12.40. No worries. I Right, right. No, because, I, you know, I'm in, on a different time zone and my clock is different. Oh, so okay. Just, oh, yeah, uh, sure, sure. Uh, so you have uh, about 30 minutes more. So okay, anything cool. event. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, yes. Very yes. nice. Yeah. All right. So uh, I begin with a little review for uh, about Dirichlet L functions so that uh, uh, all the young students here are with me, at least on this topic. Uh, Dirichlet L functions uh, mm, are somehow... Uh, um, uh, ra rather important in many investigations and uh, um, I think their L values, etc., are well understood. So let chi, uh, so this is uh, the ring of integers mod F and the invertible elements in that. Uh, so let chi be a character uh, which is a primitive, which is called, which is a primitive directly character of conductor F. This is called a primitive Dirichlet character of conductor F. It is known that if chi is an odd character of Z mod F star, which means that chi of minus one is minus one, odd character means chi of minus one is minus one, then L zero chi is an algebraic number, which is given in terms of the generalized Bernoulli number as follows. So, you know, I am uh, trying to express things uh, very uh, concretely so that you know that at least in some cases we are talking about rather concrete mathematics. So L0 chi is minus B1 chi which is minus 1 by F summation A chi A, A running from 1 to F. Uh, this is the L value. In particular, if chi is a quadratic directly character defining a quadratic field K, then uh, uh, this class number is L0 chi by uh, the class number formula that I discussed earlier. So the class number is the L value of uh, directly quadratic character, which is minus B1 chi is equal to this. So, you know, I mean, uh, so, uh, you know, one can make a slight uh, manipulation on this class number, uh, this uh, Bernoulli number, summation A chi A from one to F minus one by F. Uh, so in fact, uh, the day before yesterday, when I started preparing, it kind of gave me a hard time in the night. Uh, 
something which I thought is obvious, but it's not totally obvious. It's a small, yeah, a small detail there. So in any case, uh, uh, what I want to point out to young audience is that, you know, you have heard about uh, class group of quadratic imaginary field about which many things have been proven, but uh, you know, it is um, kind of simplest kind of function that there can be, you know, you look at uh, this uh, directly, no, this uh, quadratic character, which is given by the uh, uh, Legendre symbol A by P, and you just uh, add it from uh, one to P minus one by two. So, you know, you start from one and two, three, four, and see whether they, they are a residue mod F or the not residue mod F, and uh, you just add them up and uh, that gives you the class number. Uh, so uh, I think the difficulty of calculating the class number is uh, perhaps knowing the deciding whether the number is quadratic residue mod P or not a residue mod P. I mean, uh, I did not think it was such a, a difficult uh, problem, but uh, obviously yeah, at the end of the day, uh, class number, uh, even of an imaginary quadratic field is not such a simple object. Okay, so in any case, I just wanted to say that I was struck. Uh, I knew the earlier formula and I also knew this, but there is a small step, uh, not a big one. Uh, it gives you this and then you see that uh, Class number is uh, very simply computable, but uh, mm, but as you know, I mean the famous Gauss uh, class number one problem that they only finitely many quadratic imaginary field and they go only up to one sixty three. I mean, uh, perhaps that cannot be proved by such uh, considerations. Okay, so in what follows uh, this particular. Uh, character of the Galois group, uh, which uh, mm, is uh, what is called the cyclotomic character and which also uh, appeared in Sudanshu's talk will play an important role. Okay, so now I want to review Herbrand Ribet theorem uh, uh, in, the, in the point of view that I was trying to advocate. So here uh, f is q zeta p, or it should have been maybe e over f, but here I have I seem to have changed the notation f and f plus. And uh, in this case, one knows that uh, the regulator upon r plus is two to the power p minus three by two. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, this uh, zeta f upon zeta f plus that I talked about earlier, it is product of uh, L0 chi. And because we have divided by zeta f plus, it is only over odd characters. And basically, it is h minus together with the power of 2 and this uh, roots of unity. Okay. So... As I said that there is a bit of a denominator here one by P and that denominator is accounted for one particular L value, which is uh, corresponds to omega P uh, to the power P minus two, which is omega P inverse. So there is one particular L value uh, uh, which has uh, which is p inverse and uh, l0 chi for other uh, l values are uh, not only algebraic numbers. So yeah, so in this case, uh, you know, I, I said uh, these are the l values and these are uh, algebraic uh, numbers and you see there is a certain denominator. There is a certain denominator there. And, uh, but the thing is that uh, this uh, denominator, in fact, uh, mostly it is not there. 
it gets, uh, you know, this, when you add it up, it is divisible by F and it's only for one particular chi that the denominator continues to be there. And uh, somehow that's the one where chi is equal to A inverse, omega P inverse. And then it will be summation of one over Z mod P star, which is P minus one by P. So for other cases, there is no denominator and that's uh, kind of the proposal one is making in this lecture. So L0 chi is, uh, so here is the conclusion. So L0 chi is not only an algebraic number, which you see from that formula, but it is a periodic integral. And uh, I am uh, saying this for some of you, it may help that it is sure orthogonality. And uh, this is just clear by looking at this. Okay, so we remove uh, this character omega p inverse, which had uh, one by p. And now this is a product of uh, uh, one side and the product on the other side. And uh, now uh, the right hand side is supposed to be integral. And uh, uh, what one wants to assert then is that all these values are integral and uh, there is a matching term by term. Okay, so I won't uh, read all this, maybe. Okay, uh, the work uh, of Ribet was to prove that P divides uh, B1 chi, which is L0 chi. The chi inverse eigen component of the class group is non-trivial by constructing an unramified extension. Uh, and uh, the work of Herbrand was to say that uh, uh, if uh, uh, the class number is non-trivial, then P must divide that. Okay, so the following conjecture about L0 rho extends the integrality properties of L0 chi encountered and used earlier. So uh, in this uh, slide, I have uh, discussed uh, Dirichlet L functions and uh, rewritten the class number formula in this form. Uh, and uh, in this form, uh, as I said, the class group is a module for the Galois group. And therefore, it also can be factorized as product over certain chi's in terms of the chi eigen components. And one is saying that uh, not only is there the equality of the product, but of term by term. And uh, uh, so, this point of view, I take it further. And uh, here is what I call the mod p analog of the Artin conjecture. So let rho be an irreducible representation of the Galois group, cutting out a CM extension of Q. Uh, so, so that, uh, as I said, rho of minus one must be minus one, where minus one is the complex conjugation uh, in the Galois group. Then the uh, suggestion is that unless rho is a one dimensional representation factoring through this Galois group, with rho bar, the reduction of rho mod p being omega p inverse, L0 rho is integral outside 2. So, you know, uh, as you see, this uh, conjecture is uh, very much analogous to the usual Artin conjecture. Uh, uh, the Artin conjecture says that the L, L function is supposed to be entire unless the representation is one dimensional and a specific one. And here also one is saying that the L value is supposed to be integral unless rho is a one dimensional representation factoring through this uh, cyclotomic field and is of a particular kind. So uh, in the Artin's conjecture, uh, it is a trivial representation and here it is the inverse of the cyclotomic character. So I think uh, the inverse of the cyclotomic character is also a reflection of the fact that we are looking at zero and not one. 
and people who do Iwasawa theory, they know that you know we can do translation by integers by multiplying by the cyclotomic character. So in some sense, that also is in conformity with uh, the assertion of the Artin's conjecture about L1. Okay. So, uh, you, you know, uh, just to say that uh, uh, this conjecture is, uh, of course, motivated by whatever we said about the directly characters about which I will come back again in some greater detail. Uh, uh, but uh, there is also uh, this uh, very famous theorem due to Dalin and Ribet, which could be considered as a weaker version of conjecture one. So uh, this is a theorem due to Dalin and Ribet. Let F be a totally real number field, chi be a character of finite order. So this is an abelian character cutting out a CM extension. Let omega be the order of the gr group of roots of unity in K. Then it says that the de denominators are bounded by the roots of unity in that field K. So, so, uh, whereas we are saying that there are no denominators at all for most chi. So in fact, conjecture one can be used to make precise the above theorem of dalin ribet as follows. The simple argument using the fact that Artin L function is invariant under induction will be left to the reader. Uh, let F be a totally real field, chi be a finite order character, cutting out a non-CM, but uh, no, non-real, but CM extension. Then one is saying that the L value is not integral, that if L value is not integral, then the character mod P must be this character. And chi must be furthermore a character of this associated to a character of this Galois group. So uh, uh, the conjecture in the case of uh, abelian characters is a refinement of the lean ribet. Uh, okay. So uh, okay. So the, here is an example. Uh, here is a remark which I would like to make that you know not only does uh, 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 Artin's conjecture say that. Uh, there is uh, at most one pole, but it's also a simple pole. So in this remark, I want to use that analogy. In the examples that I know, which are for characters of uh, only Q uh, with chi equals omega P inverse, if L0 chi has a pole, mod P pole, the pole is of order one. More precisely, if you take L to be the field generated by the values of the character, uh, subfield of QP bar generated by the image of chi, then L0 chi. So, you know, when it has a pole, we are saying that the pole is uh, of order one. Then L0 chi is the inverse of the uniformization of this field. So, then one is saying that uh, uh, the denominator in L0 chi has order one. So it would be nice to know if this is the case for characters of the Galois group uh, in general. This would be in the spirit of classical Artin's conjecture that not only the poles are there only in one case, but the poles are simple. Okay, so uh, what I want to do uh, now is uh, 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 you speak about uh, uh, abelian L functions, not only in the context of uh, Q, Gita, P, but, uh, you know, I mean, the cyclotomic field, uh, I mean, uh, there is Q, Gita, P, but there is also Q, Gita, N, which has, which offers more flexibility. So, uh, uh, the aim of this section is to prove some of those integralist statements about uh, the, that I conjectured in the context of abelian L functions, directly L functions. And the first theorem says that uh, uh, if the conductor, so let chi be a primitive directly character on Z mod MN, where M and N are co-prime and odd, 
then this L value is an algebraic integer. So, uh, uh, okay, of course, as I have said, these are all well known, although I cannot say it is all well known to uh, in standard books, uh, it's there, but anyway, these are well known. So uh, this L value is an algebraic integer as soon as the uh, character chi is uh, has conductor which has two prime factors. So this is a easy check uh, from this definition. Uh, on the other hand, if there is only one factor in the conductor, which means that we are looking at this group now, only one prime, Z mod P power N. Uh, then uh, this L value is an algebraic integer if and only if this character is not equal to omega P inverse. That is what I was formulating before. That uh, only for one particular character, things are going uh, to be non-integral. I mean, okay, so one should say that this Z mod P, Z mod P power N star is Z mod P star cross this and uh, the reduction mod P C is only chi one and it's a condition on chi one. So it is uh, like saying chi bar is not equal to omega P inverse, okay. So the following proposition follows by putting the previous two lemmas together and uh, primitive character on Z mod N star, then L zero chi doesn't belong to GP bar are exactly those for which N is a power P power and chi is omega P inverse. So this is what the conjecture say. Okay, so the following consequence of the proposition suggests that prudence is to be exercised when discussing congruences of L values to which I will turn soon. Uh, which are congruent. So, you know, suppose P and Q are two primes for any character of Z mod Q star of order P, define the character of Z mod PQ star. So, you know, because its conductor is uh, divisible by two primes, its L value is integral. Whereas if you go mod P, you know, uh, chi two is of order P, so it will vanish. So, um, so therefore, uh, uh, chi and omega P inverse are congruent uh, characters, but one of them is periodically non-integral, whereas L zero chi is integral. So, uh, I I know. Uh, Today, many people are speaking on Iwasawa theory and so on, and uh, uh, congruences is uh, something they think about. So I hope, uh, uh, yeah, this needs to be uh, kept in mind that uh, congruences don't, uh, congruences of uh, characters don't always translate into congruences of L values. Okay, so, in fact, here is a question which, uh, in fact, is a question uh, just about Dirichlet characters, and uh, you know, it's a question which which can be posed to any young student. And uh, in fact, my hope is that somebody will come up and do some of these computations. So here I am looking at a character whose conductor is p to the power d times m, a primitive character. And uh, this character is omega p inverse mod p. But since there are two prime, uh, there, there are um, at least two prime factors. L zero chi is p integral. So this we have seen. Uh, no, not proposition one by lemma one. A uh, proposition one or lemma one. Uh, by this lemma, as long as chi has two prime factor uh, has two distinct factors two distinct prime factors, then uh, the L value is always integral.
So this L0 chi is integral. Now the question is, is it possible to have L0 chi to be zero? I mean, uh, the, this cannot be a difficult uh, computation for, uh, I would like to uh, uh, know if uh, uh, this can happen and uh, maybe to understand what's going on. So uh, my proofs are good to detect integrality, but not good for questions modulo P. Uh, so uh, the question is relevant for uh, uh, class groups. The question is relevant to see if the character omega P appears in the class group. Uh, such a character is no, known not to appear in the class group of Q zeta P power D. So uh, it is possible that people in the subject know this, but uh, just to say that uh, when people study Herbrand ribet theorem, there is always this uh, one case which is done independently, uh, omega P inverse, that that character doesn't appear in the class group. Um, I don't know whether that's an application of uh, Stickelberger or that's more elementary, but you know, in Halbran ribet theorem, uh, you know, so the way I have reviewed things, uh, the uh, one character gives rise to a pole one by P and the other characters are integral and the integral ones are the ones which may possibly give rise to the uh, chi components in the class group. But one needs to also prove that this omega p inverse doesn't appear in the class group. And uh, that is a separate small case that is always done. But that is always done for q zeta p. And uh, from what I have written here, it's also known not to appear for zeta p power d. But, uh, okay, of course, you know, I am a... Uh, not an expert on uh, cyclotomic fields. So uh, maybe it is known, but in any case, my question here is uh, to understand those chi's for which L0 chi may be zero mod P. And uh, I have, uh, you have everything in front of you and I, I, I think it just begs to be calculated. Okay. Okay, so here is a little bit of, uh, uh, so next few slides, uh, I, I don't have too many slides. The next few slides are going to talk something about congruences of L values given congruences of uh, uh, representations. Okay, so congruences of L values is one of the dominant themes of contemporary number theory. Yeah, there is no denying that. But as much of mathematics, its role has been felt for a long time. In this case, in terms of what is called Kumar congruences. Thus, Kumar discovered that irregular primes, it discovered, no, that, no, Kumar discovered irregular primes, not in terms of P dividing L0 chi, but in terms of P dividing a Bernoulli number. So, you know, here you, you might, you might uh, rec uh, recall that I am calling these generalized Bernoulli numbers, B and chi or B1 chi, which is what we have used here, uh, more generally B and chi, but uh, Kumar used uh, not B and chi or B1 chi, but just B n, because there is a certain congruence which relates the two. So, we just state the precise results. Um, so first of all, L minus N chi is equal to this B N plus one chi. So B N plus one chi, you know, I defined B one chi for you and B N plus one chi can be similarly defined. Uh, then there is this congruence which relates B one chi with a Bernoulli number. So these L values or uh, B one chi are related to ordinary Bernoulli numbers and uh, therefore putting one and two together, you have that the L value that we are looking in this lecture are, uh, they can be simplified. They are just the zeta values. 
and uh, this is what uh, uh, Kumar uh, considered. So in particular, P divides L0 chi if and only if P divides a Bernoulli number. And this is Kumar's criteria for irregularity of a prime. So indeed, I think uh, as uh, Kalyan said in the introduction to Larry Washington, his book uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, the place to go for all these matters. It's a great book and uh, I would say I have been reading it for many decades, but still not understood it fully. Okay, so uh, uh, here I said a few words about congruences of uh, L values. So, you know, I think uh, um, oh, one wants to kind of play with these congruences and uh, uh, you want to uh, typically say that uh, uh, when uh, representations are congruent, they are the same mod P, then their L values are the same. And uh, what I'm saying in the next slides is that uh, it is uh, roughly true, but some prudence is required. Okay. So uh, uh, this lecture considers integrality properties of certain art in L functions at zero. It may seem most natural that if two, uh, if two such art in representations have the same simplification mod P, and do not contain the character, then L0 rho one and L0 rho two, which are in GP bar have the same reduction mod P. Yeah, but uh, this we already saw in one of the remarks that, uh, you know, I had two characters, chi one and chi two, one has a composite conductor congruent mod p to omega p inverse and uh, uh, therefore one was integral and one was non-integral and therefore they cannot be congruent. So uh, uh, what I'm remarking here is that it is possible to fix this problem for abelian characters of q and more generally for any totally real number field which is what this section strives to do is the proposition to below. Uh, uh, so these uh, things I have done only for characters, but it also can be done for more general art in representations. Okay, so the problem that we find dealing with abelian characters is that they may be congruent for some prime, but they may have different conductors. And this is what was happening for chi1 and chi2. One had a composite character conductor and the other had prime conductor. And uh, the problem, uh, they have different conductors in which case it is not the L value which are congruent, but a modified L value, LF zero chi, which gives the right congruence. These L values are products uh, of certain uh, finite Euler factors with L0 chi, where P are all primes dividing either the conductor of chi1 or conductor of chi2. So it is a, a device to kind of, you know, if you are given a modular form on gamma naught n, you can also think of this as modular form on gamma naught mn. A modular form on gamma naught n is also a modular form on gamma naught mn. A Dirichlet character on Z mod n is also a Dirichlet character on mn, Z mod mn, but it won't be primitive. But um, it has the um, most Euler factors are the same. A few Euler factors are different. So this is somehow looks like the source of the problem and uh, Mm, okay, so here is uh, one lemma. Let chi1, chi2 be two characters. Uh, consider them as functions on Z mod F by declaring their values outside Z mod F start to be zero. So, you know, uh, when you define uh, L series associated to a Dirichlet character, you, you write summation chi n upon n to the power S where n runs over all integers, whereas chi is defined only on uh, Z mod F star. 
And uh, this is the usual convention. Assume that the reduction mod P chi one bar, chi two bar are the same. Uh, if P divides F, assume that neither of them factors through Z mod P start to give omega P inverse, which creates non-integrality. Then the, the statement is that LF, these two L values are in GP and have the same reduction mod P. So these are not the true L values, but a little modified L values. Uh, yeah, so I have said something, but uh, uh, okay, so in some ways, uh, I have done something by hand here, uh, trying to say when L values uh, could be expected to be congruent. Uh, and uh, there are some examples here. And then I have something uh, more general for totally real number fields in, in the context of the lean ribet where uh, uh, something similar can be done. But maybe I won't go into that and I end the talk here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Dipendra Prasad for uh, such a uh, insightful lecture. I'm sure many of you have got a uh, lot of things to th think about. So uh, firstly, this uh, in-house participants, is there any question from you so that we can take it up? It doesn't seem like, and uh, so we can open up the chat thing. Maybe uh, then we can go to the online participants. So Dipendra. Mahesh yeah. uh, Kakre has asked, I have not assumed rho is irritable. No, I think uh, uh, wherever I have used the notation rho, you know, I I mean, uh, the first time rho made its appearance was in terms of the factorization of the dedicated zeta function, uh, L S rho raised to power dimension rho product over rho. No, so I, sorry, Dipendra, I was just being a bit pedantic when, because when you <laughs> described the Artin conjecture, you said, uh, unless rho is trivial. And because rho yeah, was yeah, not right. okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Certainly, no, it is important in mathematics to be very precise and you are right. Uh, yes, of course. Okay, so good. Uh, and you said Cassio Nogio for... Uh, the Dalin Ribet theorem that also. Ah, Dalin Ribet theorem was also independently and almost at the same time done by uh, Kasyu Nogyu. Yes. Uh, in fact, a little bit earlier. You know, the paper is a little. Okay. Couple of years earlier than Dalin Ribet. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, so of course I know her very well uh, indeed. Uh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. No. Uh, yeah, okay. So I think. Uh, I do not know how uh, somehow Dalin Ribet seems to get quoted. Um, uh, okay, but uh, uh, apologies. And now Suprajit uh, had asked, we have seen several mod P congruences for L values in this lecture. Do they somehow hint that similar results can be obtained or already there? You know, in some sense, uh, the whole point of view of periodic L function is uh, to use this point of view that uh, congruences uh, uh, give rise to congruences of L functions uh, uh, and therefore uh, you can build periodic L functions. So uh, whatever I am saying is uh, partly the reason why periodic L functions can be constructed. Uh, uh, perhaps they are being constructed in some specific situation with specific theorems. And uh, um, maybe I am looking at situations which are slightly off what is being done for periodic L functions. You know, in fact, uh, I have been doing this for last three, four, five years, and I have uh, tried to correspond with many people. And uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion about uh, uh, whether uh, what I say is already said by others, uh, but uh, yeah. 
Okay, so Mahesh has just Uh, Mahesh says that Artin conjecture for PID L function and it is known to hold. So, uh, yeah. There, there is an Artin conjecture for PID L functions and it's known as a consequence of the main conjecture. But the question you ask is finer, I think. So, uh, what, what it would imply for the sort of questions you ask is that. Uh, um so the the poles so you you conjecture that it doesn't have a pole uh, if something happens uh, 